I suggest you follow the logic of the presentation. Because every two weeks, I go to a farm in Israel to analyze the achievements. And those who need it, in the end, said, now we want to buy Afilab. That's what they, why? Because when you watch the presentation, you see the nature, it's leading him naturally to understand that uh, he is going to benefit from the Afilab. And I suggest that's the way you should approach the customer because at the beginning when you sell a new gadget, everybody buys, especially in Israel. So Afilab, everybody buys, but then it settles down. People start thinking, what can it do, what it cannot do? Then you really have to show that it does something. Uh, first, for all, some of us who are not familiar, we are talking about ketosis, which is a very familiar name now. Basically, it's a metabolic disease, and metabolic disease usually is affected a lot by management. Uh, it's associated with lower levels of sugar in the blood, but especially it elevates what we call ketone bodies in the blood, in the urine, in the milk. The urine is the most sensitive, and the blood is the less sensitive. It's very difficult to find ketone bodies in the blood. It's much easier to find ketone bodies in the urine. Now, this is one of the obstacles we are facing. Ketosis can be clinical or subclinical. <laughs> you must understand that this difference between clinical and subclinical is usually something very artificial. Clinical, the only difference between them is not the damage that they are causing. But do we see them or don't we see them? If we see them, they are clinical. And that is the eyes of the observer to a lot of things. I'll give you some example in a minute. And what important thing is that the ketosis is the best expression of a negative energy balance. It means what is a negative energy balance, like any other balance. The animals put out more energy that he gets from his reserves or from the food. Now, how do we diagnose ketosis in the field today? The most popular way that used to be in the past is the smeller. He smells. It's amazing. You go now around the world, even in Israel, and you say, how do you diagnose ketosis? He says, I can smell it. Believe me. After one year with cows, you don't smell anything. <laughs> and, and the only thing you can smell with ketosis is a cow that says, here, I have a very severe ketosis. But that's not the idea. The second thing is urine milk, milk tests are very common. But they have the problem. Who are going to test? It costs money. And do we have ketosis in the same day that the animal really have a negative energy balance? We look at it. And checking by risk factors. About 20 years ago, I think, uh, we introduced into the AFI farm a list of risk factors that I'm going to show you that when these risk factors come out, there is a great chance that the cow has ketosis. The only trouble, and that's what I'm really talking, I'm going to talk about today, is that these risk factors are really not very applicable today. They were applicable, applicable 20 years ago, and now, for, show, for reasons I'm going to show, they are not good enough. So we need another system. The Afilab, Afilab is one answer to that. Loss of body weight is a very good one. We have an AFI scale in, uh, with the AFI, AFI farm system. If it's calibrated correctly, it's a very good indicator of a negative energy balance. Unfortunately, we still don't have an application installed in, but it, I don't think it's a problem to install one. And the dream is acetone in milk. Of course, why acetone in milk? This is the direct diagnosis. Always don't scratch your right ear with the left hand if you can do it with the right one. Now, there are applications now, but they are not online. Nobody really succeeded in uh, doing acetone in uh, test in line, online. And the things that we, the Afilab does, this is the fat to protein ratio in the milk. 
and we show a few examples. Now, when we look at the retrospective aspect, when we look what happened to the farm, which is very important to us to see what is the situation in the farm, we use few measures of negative energy balance. The first one is ketosis diagnosed by VET. Now, here we have a problem. Which cows to check? Some cows around the world, some vets check all the cows after calving. In some, they don't. In some, they don't check at all. In others, they check according to risk factors. This is one question. It costs money to check cows. The other thing is when to check. Because up to now, we used to check cows in the regular post examination, which was five to 12 days. This is okay. But what happens if the ketosis happens after a month after calving, like we have uh, in a far country in our farms that Afiram looks, looks after, and the ketosis is the late ketosis? Nobody can diagnose it in an early checkup. The other one is high-fat corrected milk. We look and say, what happens to cows that gave a lot of milk in terms of fat? Why in terms of fat? Because fat is the most demanding part of energy. But this is not a balance. It's a balance with a debit with no credit. We don't know what the animals had in. We know what you gave out. So this is not really a balance. But it's a good objective indication in a way. The other third one is loss of body condition score. You know we score cows. It's very common around the world from one to five. If you want to imagine Maurizio is one and I'm five. Just to give you some ideas. And there are a lot in between. And even though he tries very hard to be five, and I'm trying very hard to be one, we are going to end our life one and five. But that's, that's how we score. So uh, we can use body weight as alternative to body condition score. Now, the head, there is a problem of, of objectivity and reliability. In one of the previous meetings, I showed that even the AFI scale can be calibrated very good and can be not calibrated. In South Africa, for instance, they're very, they used to be very well calibrated because they depended on them, on feeding in the grazing area. You go to other countries and you see that the, the scale is, doesn't work. It's haphazard. It has no significance. Fat-to-protein ratio. There are various systems to look at it. it. The great advantage, it's available. When you have regular milk tests, and, uh, but it has biases. For instance, what you do in Fermagiano herds in Italy, that they have a very high fat, how you deal with it, but we have our ways to deal with it. Uh, now, many years ago, somebody found out, you see it was in 1986. I always say now 1986 because I feel, when I say 86, some people think I'm talking about 1886. So it's important to understand, we're talking about 1986. Somebody showed that when an animal is in a negative energy balance, the fat in the milk goes up and the protein goes down. Few years after that, we started to apply it in various models in Israel, which proved to be very effective through the years, and some of you benefited from it as well. And now, in recent years, we took the cutoff of 1.4. When you divide fat in the milk to protein in the milk, we took 1.4 and above as a cow with negative energy balance. Now, what are the penalties? This is very important because, although I am a vet, not from the academy, Ronen, not that I'm ashamed that you said that I'm from the academy, but I'm not from the academy. This is my advantage. I am from the field. Okay. So uh, when we look at, we believe uh, in good health, but we know and you should know that health has a price. I have no problem to write a prescription and to say feed this, feed that, feed that, and you have very little diseases. And we had such situation in this country, but it has price. You always have to balance the cost versus the benefits. So let's see the damages. 
This is taken from a great sample of herds in Israel. By the way, the data in Israel is very similar to the data elsewhere. But I rely on it because it's available, it's very reliable. When we look at the peak of the yield, and we compare animals with positive energy balance to animals with negative energy balance, we see that they peak to the same level. That's why farmers don't believe you when you say that the animal has a negative energy balance. You say, what are you talking about? She's a 55 liters uh, animal. It's true. They peak on the same, but what happens? The persistency, and we can calculate persistency in various ways, is much lower when the animal is in a negative energy balance. Instead of going down like that, she's going down like that with the milk. And you can't see it with your eyes. You have to apply special calculations. Now, when you look at the such a population, which is a large population, you see that the persistency is low, and when you translate the damage to first, second, same lactation, you see this is the percentage. This is the value of one percentage. You can calculate it for each lactation. This is the worth in kilograms of milk for 305 days. And this is the damage per cow in the head. So, okay. Why should we bother? Haggai, you can't sell it to nobody. Because we say for 52 kilograms, first lactation, that's why buy such a complicated machine? This is true. It's also true when you look at the fertility. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. He doesn't trust me up to now. It's amazing. When we look at the fertility, we see, again, this is 100 farms or so, 200 farms. We look at the difference in fertility, more on estrus, less pregnancy to first service, more open days, and more animals culled. But, okay, so what? Is it bad? Nah. Not so bad. Relax, relax. <laughs> but... This is the trouble, people. We are not dealing with the population. When you go to sell Afilab to a farm, you should know and show the farmer what happens in his farm, not what happens in the universe. The universe doesn't lose money, maybe. But look, for example, one farm. This is a real farm. Look at the rates of ketosis, very high. These are the targets. This is the rates of ketosis, first lactation, second and more lactation. When we look at the peak here, the there is one kilogram peak difference between the two animals, but the persistency is much, much lower. Now let's see how much milk he can use it. He, can, he loses. He loses 200 kilograms per year. That's a story, another story. He needs it. If we look at the fertility of, those, of that farm, we see the same thing. Unobserved heat, 8%. Pregnancy to first eye, 9% difference. Open days, culling. So, to sell to him is no problem. Now, there are enough in the market that need it. Not as a gadget, that they really need it because I'll show in a minute why it happens that they don't, they can't uh, compete with it or they can't control it. So let's start with some history. I talk about clinical and subclinical ketosis. This is done many years ago, and that's what the farmers said I have this ketotic cow. Look at her, she doesn't feel well. But then we introduced a routine check for all the cows, and in the same seven heads, that's what we found. That's what the farmer found. That was the routine check, taking urine, checking the urine. You see there is a difference between farms, but there's a vast difference. 
Now, there are many studies that show that the damage of clinical ketosis, the future damages, and subclinical ketosis are exactly the same. It doesn't matter if you see it or you don't see it. Then we said, all right, they are the same. And, but unfortunately, to pick up the cow with ketosis, you must examine her. It's not easy. Now we have heard of 2,000, 3,000 uh, cows in Mexico, 5,000. It's not easy. Okay. Now, who are the cows? Who were the cows that suffered from ketosis? It's very important to know. If you are not going to check all the cows, let's check the cows that are at risk to have ketosis. So we have odds ratio. Older cows, but then cows are coming in the summer, long dry period, they're not going to have the reasons for that. But it were the risk factors. That's why we put it in the list on the computer. And there are many people here that know that I went to farms with them in their country, and I wanted to show off, and I said, show me the list, and I said, bring this cow, and I took like a Mangiofoco the magician. I put it on the stick down and it became purple, according to the risk factor. So are we happy? We should have been, but we can't. Because what happened, we found in those days that the troubles were in Israel that the, due to overfeeding before calving. And then I put, introduced the, the terms that were very funny in those days. Now, Israel is considered around the world to be a rich country. I don't know if it's rich or not, but in those days, certainly it wasn't rich. But when I said we have a rich man ketosis and a poor man ketosis, I said Israel is a rich man ketosis. Why? Overfeeding. And Sweden, which of course is a rich country, they have a poor man ketosis because then the ketosis appeared 40 days when the cows went to graze and they didn't get enough food. Of course, it was the other way around. Unfortunately, things have changed completely nowadays. So we have lessened, we changed it, and especially we introduced the routine check after calving. Now, whom will we check? Sick cows, low yield, fat cows, and cows that had a long dry period. Now, this is something uh, that we introduced few years ago, and this is something that has changed, and you must understand why now we need Afilab. This is the first hint about the Afilab if we want to discover our ketosis case. In 1997, I took seven herds that I worked in 97, and I compared the data to now to 2009, and we tried to see the distribution of the ketosis, cows with fat to protein more than 1.4, for according to the days from days in milk. If you remember in the old days, our troubles were here, because everything was the result of the dry period and the low uh, yielders. Now, in 97, that was the distribution. In 2009, we had a much higher this cases of ketosis, but also much higher up to 45 days. It means we haven't finished in the first week with the ketosis. We're still carrying it on. And uh, this is a different problem now for now, for us. But what happened in those farms, this was the increase in production during these 10 years. This is an enormous amount of milk. Now, unfortunately, the nutritionist can't give it back. So let's now look at the risk factors. The same risk factors, calving diseases, the same. Overcondition, the same. But now, high yield. This has changed. While in 97, high yield wasn't a risk factor, today, 
High yield is the main risk factor why an animal is a negative energy balance after calving. And this is a tremendous change. Because we want to have a high yield. We don't want to have calving diseases. We don't have to have over-conditioned cows. We can prevent it. But we want high yield. Now, the question is, if we have high yield, do we have to pay with punishment because we wanted to have high yield? Or we can correct it and do something about it. So we see that here we have another new problem. Now I show you some patterns of negative energy balance. The first one, this is one, the all herds, as I said before, this is a typical pattern. Still, mainly in the first 15 days, but you see that older cows still have more b problems, even up to 30 days. Now let's look at now two herds. This herd number one, first of all, the rate of ketosis is very high. It means he does something, he discovers them, he checks for them. Now let's look at this pattern. This is a very similar to the old pattern. Most of the ketones in the first 50 days, because he does routine check after calving, he finds these cows because the ones that are later are fewer, and maybe some of them are really are here. And so the routine test is partly efficient. We can calculate. And we said that he discovered 51% uh, or he didn't discover 51% of the cows with negative energy balance. Now let's look at another one. I said, ah, oh, well, this is a farm we want to send to an exhibition. No ketosis. That's what we need. <laughs> Maybe we won't sell Afilab, but, but that's what we are looking for. We are looking for a healthy farm. So at last we looked and looked, and that's what we found. But unfortunately, we look at the milk. So, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, look at that. Where are they? Well, this is one of the farms that they didn't do any checking because they rely on the smell. <laughs> it still happens. I said, do you do regular checking? He said, yes. I was very surprised because I couldn't uh, understand. I said, how do you do it? He said, I smell. Here you are, evidence for smelling. Now, this is the third one. There is one guest here from a European country that this is not his farm, but we saw exactly the same. This is the most difficult pattern. You see a late ketosis. A hundred percent of the cows have ketosis after 30 days. Now this farmer, he doesn't do a regular check anyhow. But even if he did, he wouldn't discover those cows. What are we going to do with those cows? How are we going to discover them? Uh, now, he missed almost all the cows. And this is quite a common problem in many, in many farms. Now, let's look about prevention. We look about nutrition. I always go with our ambition, how to prevent diseases. From my point of view, we don't we don't uh, start with sensors. We finish with sensors. We want to change the nutrition. And we want to look at the housing. All of them are important in preventing animal uh, negative energy balance. I'm not going into it. But my greatest enemies are the people who sell feed additives. I know some people are smiling because every conference abroad, they want to kill me because I say it's, it's of no use. And it's, it's not very good because they don't say that tough milk is no use. So it's not fair, really. But that's a fact. I want to show you some example. And this, the last one is early diagnosis and prompt uh, treatment. So why going on the head with the, in the wall? Because look at look additives. I took some studies. I followed these things for many years, 1970. 1989, 
2001, 2010, nothing new. They are called this name, that name. They are selling it with a smiling girl outside or with a smiling boy. But still, the basic components are the same. There are no new revolutions. Somebody said, oh, right, now let's change the approach. Now, again, head on the wall. Now, I want to give you an example from Israel. This is what we had. No ketosis, a miracle. So we look at it and it says, this is what the vet said. He said, we check all the cows for ketosis, but he says, this is disease, I just quote him. As he said, that hardly exists on the farm because they are all so thin, they don't have anything to lose from to oxidize fat. So we look at the distribution, that's what we see. He has ketosis. He has ketosis. But he also uses a lot of 30 days. He gives them food additives. It costs a lot of money. It costs about 120 Israeli shekels, about $40 or something like that per cow. Now see what happens. When we look at the fat of the herd and we compare it to the fat of the Israeli herd book and the protein, we see at the beginning of the lactation, the fat of the herd for 30 days is very low comparing to the Israeli herd. But this is a fat depression. It's a temporary fat depression. After 30 days, like all depressed population, you can look at Libya, I don't want to go to other places. <laughs> you see, they go out. They can't stay, so they keep kept quiet for 30 days, and after 30 days, they come out with ketosis. The same with the multipara, the same idea. So you can't cheat it. That's the idea with feed additives. It costs a lot of money, but you can't cheat it. So we are left with the Afilab concept. And uh, you heard a lot about it. Now, three years ago, was it the dealer? Yes. Because some of my friends here, I don't want to shame them. But when I said that at that time the model didn't work, they said, don't worry, we'll sell it. <laughs> but after uh, one year, they said, well, something is wrong with the Afilab. We can't sell it. Because you, you can cheat some people some of the times. They can't cheat all people all of the time. So the best solution is to do something better. And that's what we try to do in Afikim. And in this case, we succeeded partly. And uh, this was based on a field trial. Now, the gold standard, and I didn't write it here. This was a mistake. If an animal had in the blood, but in one of the four days, not in one day, in one of four days, she had a BHBA. This is ketones above 1.4. This was the data, and we had two models. One of them was a strict model. They said that the animal has to be three times in consecutive milk analysis to have positive results, and the other one, a very lenient one, one in three. Now, uh, how did we arrive at it? Before we started, we did a trial. We produced ketosis in four uh, calving cows. And we saw that the rise in ketone bodies is not parallel to the change in milk. It's not the same day. It takes a few days. The same with the body weight. Then we said, if it's like that, we have to build a model that will give an answer. This is the result of the model. And we have a specificity of 80.7% <coughs> the model. It, it's not likely we showed 90%, but it's, it's not bad for diagnostic uh, mean. And in fact, the idea is to get a list of cows. The, rad, the red ones are with high probability of being ketotic, and the black one with low probability. But all the animals are there. That, Archetotic. 
And then this is how you get it. In the Afilab, this is the list, and I enlarged two lines, and you see. Now, the point I'm trying to make now is this. You see this cow? She's on the black list. She had a ratio of 1.64. <coughs> of course, she's uh, bound to be ketotic. This one is 1.46. And she had, uh, and she's not in the list. And of course, oh, he's right about the translation. Yes, that's uh, I believe, and we still have to prove it, that the cows in the black list are bound to be red eventually. I know it from clinical experience. And when you talk to farmers, they have the same ex uh, impression. It means once a cow is in a blacklist, she means she is sensitive, and she will be red eventually, which gives us ideas about how to treat her. So uh, I want to make a few remarks that you remember when you argue with people about it. A negative test, some vets are going to check me. Even me, they won't probably are going to check other people abroad. They said, ah, she was on the list. I took urine, and she is negative. <laughs> I hear this complaint. Of course she can be negative, because she has, if you want him to be correct, right, he has to take urine four days in succession. That's what we claim. We didn't see in the same day. You say, if you took four days in succession, you will get almost 100% chances that in one of those days, she will be ketotic. So this is not a proof and remember because this complaint always arises. The other thing is, this is continuous measurement. And the BHBA in the blood has daily variation. So it depends when you take the blood also. And uh, as I said before, I suggest to test and follow up all the cows in the list. Because the treatment for ketosis, it has two advantages. One of them, it's not expensive. And the other one, it's not dangerous. It's very important because some of the treatments are dangerous. This is not dangerous. To sum up, first of all, we must all realize that these things become worse and worse every year. And it doesn't only depend on the yield. Even if you have a low production, you can still have an, a grave negative energy balance. Remember that. Because it's a balance between production and a feed. And this is a problem. Because we know how to make milk genetically but we didn't give them the right answer in nutrition, unfortunately. Late ketosis is a problem, not in all herds, but in many herds. And these herds, they are especially the one you are looking for. Now remember, the continuous negative energy balance has a very grave effect. I didn't put it in money but you show from Haggai's uh, calculation, put the right numbers on that, you get the same amount. It's a lot of money. So it's very easy to understand why they need to do something for it. Now, what can they do? As I said, the first thing I tried to change, the transition feed additive and things, it's not good enough, unfortunately, for many reasons. For instance, when we talk about the transition uh, period uh, feeding, we need what we call a non-bypass protein. It's very difficult to get non-bypass protein now because of the med cow disease and so on and so on. So even if farmers try to do it, you can't do it. So it's not simple. 
Now, feed additives, I don't want you to fight with the people who sell uh, additives. You don't deem them as enemies. But I can tell you from my experience here that people say we give food additives, but the instruction is to give it 20 days. They give it three days. The instruction to give it so much kilograms, they give it two kilograms. Why don't they give it 30 days? It costs lots of money. And uh, we don't know if it helps. And the most thing is, there are no alternatives for early diagnosis and prompt treatment. And Afilab might be the one to do the job. That's when the moment when I finish. I don't say mention the word Afilab when I go to the farm. But then they say, ah, now I'm going to borrow to think, put it in his statistics and be happy. Because that's the way farmers should be led to understand that this is the solution for the problem. Then I said I'm not from the academy, this is my proof. <laughs> Usually in Israel people don't want to ask me questions because the last one they used to ask, he died. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, I know, I know, Pedro. Yeah. Okay, the question is, uh, we are using Afilab to uh, detect cows very early in the lactation with the, uh, when they are above 1.4. And regardless of the urine uh, test, we are uh, giving a shot of propylene glycol. And when we are doing the, the 7 to 12 day revision postpartum, obviously our records of ketosis are diminishing a lot according to the old method of checking with the urine. And you send me a, a letter saying you are not reporting ketosis. Well, we we according to that procedure, we, we is dropping a lot. So when we do it like that, but what do we do after 20 days? From 20 to 50 days, we are not doing anything, even though we record levels above 1.4 or 1.6. What do we do to treat those cows? Do you use the list or you just look at 1.4? Uh, no, we, we, we look at 1.4 uh, every day. We have like, like a trigger, okay. so it's, it's giving us the cow. But we are, we are not treating cows after 20 days because we thought ketosis was just something in the first 20 days. So after that, what would you recommend to do or to follow as a procedure? My suggestion based on cow 28, you see my good friend here, is this, first of all, use the list. Because it uh, gives you much better indication. Second, when you find, treat. How to treat? There are no shortcuts in treatment. You cheat, she cheats you back. There is a protocol of treatment. You have to treat her. But the next thing, you must recheck this cow after a week or so without the Afilab, to see what happens to her, because relapses are very common in uh, ketosis. Then it doesn't matter if it's 20 days, 30 days, 50 days. After 50 days, it's very rare. You can have it, but it's very rare. So this is my suggestion. Use the list. Every time you find a red cow, check, and follow it up. Thank you. Any more questions by anybody? I can tell you one thing. The reason that uh, Pedro asked me the question, last time he asked me a question in Mexico, in Torreón, I think, I fell off the stage. <laughs> so he, very, he secretly hoped it will happen to me again. 